It is with great pleasure and honor that I, Nasha Thuri, and I, Neev Sharma, stand before you today and welcome an inspirational figure, a visionary, and the first female to join the Indian Police Services. Please bring your hands together and welcome Her Excellency, Dr. Kiran Bedi. Dr. Kiran Bedi's remarkable journey from breaking gender barriers in a male-dominated field to transforming a maximum security prison into a rehabilitation center for inmates is a testament to the power of extraordinary vision turned into reality. At Global Schools Group, an initiative of Global Schools Foundation, we firmly believe that vision is the blueprint of a brighter future. Within two decades of its inception, GSG has had a rich legacy of growth. Let's give you a glimpse into our school's visionary path through a short video. What does it take to make a leader of tomorrow? A leader is forged by fire. Shaped, reshaped, their metal tested. Resilience and strength, carefully owned. Yet a leader must also be like water, filling the cracks in a world rich in diversity, attuned to its complexities, flowing, adapting, changing. For a leader of tomorrow sails along on the winds of change, their minds purified by the rarefied air of lofty thoughts and high ideals, the jet streams of innovation and invention, neither of which can be enabled without space space that can both contain and expand, mold and liberate, a foundation. For a leader must stand on solid ground. Responsibility breeds sustainability. Wisdom is cultivated by respect for this earth. Building the foundations for tomorrow's leaders begins here. Global Schools Foundation, celebrating 20 years of premium education. That is the inspiring journey of the GSG, and we believe it has a long way to go. GSG started its journey in Singapore with its first school, which only had 48 students. That school was Global Indian International School, which now has 17 campuses worldwide. We are proud to be part of a school that has evolved so much with time and is ahead of the curve in providing holistic yet futuristic education to students, making them globally competitive. Here is a short video on GIS's journey. Leading edge technology, science, and sports. Innovation, acceleration. Space exploration. Right here, right now, my future begins. It's hands-on, but it's also academically way up here. So I'm learning the skills I need to explore the universe. And I'm expanding my skill base with these next-generation purpose-built studios. They adapt to a changing world. It's the future, and it's now. Right here, right now. Technology gives me the opportunity to dive deep into research and innovation. With world-class educators to guide the way, I am best prepared for higher education and the university of my choice. New advances, new insights, mean new opportunities. And with them come new creative ways of problem solving. It's the future and it's now. Right here, right now, at these smart sports facilities, while best-in-class coaches are developing my strengths, guiding me to overcome my weaknesses and bringing out the best that I can be. So I'm tech empowered for better results, bringing my dream into reality. The future, it's now. Dr. Kiran Bedi is not only the embodiment of modern day feminism in India, but also serves as a role model for an entire generation of Indians, including myself. 
She has undertaken numerous incentives and introduced societal reforms in an effort to produce a better future. Dr. Bedi exemplifies true leadership by authoring over 12 books about her experiences in Tihar Jail, insights on India, and addressing critical issues such as corruption, leadership, and governance. Not even hesitating to have the car of a prominent government leader told, she sets a compelling example as a role model. What makes her journey even more remarkable is that even when society was not favorable to women, she did not lose hope and surpassed men in sports and education, disproving the notion that women are inferior to men. Her dedication to elevate India's status propelled her to becoming the first woman to join the IPS, inspiring many others to do the same. Dr. Bedi, a trailblazer, made history as the first ever female and first ever Indian appointed as United Nations Civilian Police Advisor. She had founded NGOs such as the Navjoti Indian Foundation and India Vision Foundation, focusing on vocational training for women, counseling, and prisoner rehabilitation. A skilled tennis player with multiple Asian championships, Dr. Bedi is a recipient of the prestigious Ramon Magsaysay Award and numerous other national and international honors. Her legacy extends beyond her achievement. She stands as an icon of empowerment and change. Dr. Bedi has been bestowed with many awards for her achievements. She joined the police force in 1972 and in 1979 received the President's Police Medal for Gallantry for her conspicuous courage in preventing violence during the Akali Nirankari clashes. The Ramon Magsaysay Award, also regarded as Asia's premier prize and highest honor for government services, and the United Nations Medal for Outstanding Service are just a few of her many achievements. We are fortunate to have Her Excellency Dr. Kiran Bedi here with us today, and we eagerly look forward to listening to her insights on leadership, justice, as well as the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead in our evolving society. Dr. Bedi, may we invite you on stage to join us for this leadership lecture series and address the gathering. Dear audience, let's give a huge round of applause for Dr. Kiran Bedi. I'd like to begin an engaging and interactive session between our distinguished guests and some students from the audience. Are we all excited? Let's start. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Evelyn Ranish Machingal, and I am from IGCSC 9. My question to you is, you were part of the National Cadet Corps while you were in your school days. During that time, you had won the NCC Cadet Officer Award in 1968. Do you believe that the time spent in the NCC and the values that you imparted during this experience influenced your decision to pursue a career in the Indian Police Service? Well, thank you. Lots of love. Thank you so much for, being, for giving me this <laughs> honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to thank my hosts who brought me here. Where are they? Are they here? There you are. I want to thank Sanjay too, because they facilitated this event. And there is another person here who brought me in. There you are. <laughs> See, it's possible because of school and my hosts. Otherwise, how can I come here? Would you have allowed me to enter? No way. I wouldn't have known the way. Anyway, thr I'm thrilled to meet children. And I love you, love you for the way you uh, enthused. Now, let me go back to your quick question. You talked about the NCC, right? National Cadet Corps. That's a fact that at the age of 14, one of the first subjects I asked for my college, I had gone, entered college, because then the schooling was 10 plus 4. 10 plus 4. 
So I'd finished my 10th standard in the school and entered the college, and I opted for the National Cadet Corps. And they said, no, it's an optional subject. Fill, it, fill, it, fill in other subjects. But I love the NCC because it put me into uniform straight away, from a school uniform to a khaki uniform. And at that time, I didn't know I was going to one day join the Indian Police Service officer ranks. But at the age of 14, I think there was an inner inclination towards this kind of format of life. So I opted. NCC meant everyday parade, yeah. leadership, team building, and then lots of fun, adventure, and then uh, um, uh, going for hiking and trekking, and then leading parades, uh, contingent, flag hoisting. So it was everything about patriotism. It was discipline, it was patriotism, and it was punctuality, it was fitness, it was also celebrating refreshments, it was a lot of camaraderie, a lot of team building. It was all rolled in one without my knowing it. Oh. Without my knowing it. But I loved the fact that it put me into a uniform and made me in a commanding position, lead the parades all the time as a 14-year-old. Like you have school parades and you lead them. Isn't it lots of fun when you lead the school parades and you say, right turn, and you say, attention. Don't you love the commands? You love giving the commands? I started to love giving the commands right from my school age. It just grew with me because I just loved it. I think something's inborn. Mm. Something is inborn and something is acquired. But I think the inborn also takes you to acquire more. And that love for discipline, love for patriotism, love leadership, actually took me to that on its own, and then it flourished more. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you so much for this question. Right. So are you also having NCC in school? You have National Cadet Corps? No, ma'am. You have scouts and guides? You don't offer it yet? And uh, so how do children get to parades, etc.? Physical, Physical education. But you don't do this uh, uh, civil defense, something like that? It's a, that's in government schools, I see. But not a National Cadet Corps. Uh, but National Cadet Corps is something common all over the world. It's separate. All right, maybe one. Oh, did you, all of you, so many of you are Indians. Did you get, did you get to see the 26th January Parade of India? Yes. Wow. You did? Yes. What did you see? Women power. You saw discipline, you saw co collective energy, didn't you? And I can tell you many of the girls who were leading the parade at that time have bound to be, uh, were, could have been the National Cadet Corps students. And of all the wings, the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force, many of them's roots would have gone back to National Cadet Corps. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Meenal Maheshwari, and I'm from IGCSC 9. Ma'am, my question to you is, what are your most fondest memories from your school days and childhood? My fondest memories is uh, playing pranks on a bike. <laughs> I, I used to bike a lot to the school. So when we batch of girls used to go cycling, somebody would pick up a hat here or a pool there, string here. All the pranks which I did while biking to the school and home and my tennis courts, to me, those are the fondest memories. And of course, skipping, a, running away from a class I didn't like. <laughs> and what I didn't like was embroidery. I didn't want to sit and knit. I didn't want to sit and embroider. I wanted to play. So I would just run away from embroidery class moment I could. I hope I'm not against. <laughs> because I was a very outdoor girl. So if you could make me sit and do, I would say, get, make me get. See, haven't I got up right away? <laughs> because I love to be on my feet, on my legs. So I'm a very outdoor um, mobile person. So I would just skip. And my sister nuns who were there, uh, mine was a Catholic school called the Sacred Heart School of Amritsar. And they would search me out. They know I would run away. But embroidery was so dear to the nuns, you see? It, Nuns were always fond of embroidery and knitting. And I didn't want to do it, because I didn't see any meaning in it. But it's very nice. It's an art. <laughs> it's an art. Don't, don't do this what I told you. 
If you like it, do it. If you don't like it, tell your sister. Tell your ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, ma'am. I'm Prana from IB Year 1C. Earlier, you mentioned that uh, we as students are supposed to have good memory, but I don't think that's the case since I've already forgotten the question I was supposed to ask you. <laughs> uh, but luckily, I have it in my hand. Uh, so, ma'am, you've been a national tennis player who won the Lionel Fonseca Memorial Trophy against Sri Lanka, bagging three golds and two silvers in the National Sports Festival for Women. So along with sports, you've also excelled in your studies. So as a student myself, I'd like to ask you how you were able to devote your time to gaining proficiency in both fields. Very simple, because I wanted both. When you want something more, you find the time. Okay, ma. That's the key. And when I wanted to be a champion, I was playing, competing, running, jogging, marathoning, athletics, because I wanted to win. I wanted to learn, play in tennis. I was loved it. My father played a lot of good tennis. Sports was a family sport. So daddy was a great tennis player. Mum would love tennis. So sisters would play tennis. So tennis was my family sport. So I naturally went to tennis as an eight year old and a nine year old girl. So from school, I would go to tennis court. That's how I saved my time. Straight from school to the tennis court. And tennis court where I would wait for a turn to come. I wouldn't waste time. Guess what I would do? My homework. On the side, when there would be, I have to wait for my turn, I won't say, okay, waiting and then fidgeting around. I would sit and do my homework. Why? Because I wanted to do well in academics too. So I loved education and I loved sports. There was nothing third. So once, and friends were all friends. You had enough friends in the classroom. You had enough friends on the tennis court. I didn't need to ma make more friends. Friends were done. So all I needed to do was play and read and study. And how I did it earlier was one very good secret, which my mummy did it. When we used to have a summer vacation of three months. So the, my mom used to take us to the, uh, to the bookshop and get me my class bag of the next class. It didn't wait for the last day. It didn't wait for the last day of the holidays to be over. I was given my next standard books back then. They're all beautiful new books. And I was very curious to you know what's in the new books. And I had started to act, actually study for my next class during summer vacations on my own. As, as storybooks, out of curiosity, what's coming in my new class, new books. So by the time I went to the new class, I'd read my books. So I, and as a summer vacation, I had all the time because I was not going to school and I was only playing tennis. So tennis and my own school. So I used to do these double things on my own without anybody telling me that will pay me dividends later. Out of curiosity to read, and I was very fond of English literature and others, geography, history, civics, very curious history, very curious on geography, very curious on these subjects particularly. History and geography were my favorites. And English stories. So I used to finish with them. Mathematics was not my strength. It wasn't my strength. And I used to run away from it. Geometry and algebra was scary. So some were very close to me. So some were trying to say, OK, we can avoid. So that is why I was a liberal arts student. And that is why my whole career became liberal arts, went on to do political science, masters in constitutional law, uh, et cetera because of the liberal arts, not, not the others. So this is how uh, I could, by doing, studying, uh, while doing my homework, while waiting for my class, which meant that I valued my time so much and energy that let me not waste my time. And that is the reason I became the first student in India, in fact, the first student in India uh, from any university achieving two scholarships, academic and sports. And they broke the rule for them, there's two scholarships. A, I topped my, in my masters uh, in my political science, and I was a national junior champion. And the vice chancellor made an exception to the rule, saying this is the first time we have a student who's good at both. And the reason was this, A, advanced study, and second was um, adva the not letting my time go. But what is important, uh, my sh short answer to your question is, I wanted both. 
If you don't want both, you won't do it. How many times did mommy, daddy tell you, do it, do it, and I will do it or I won't do it? Nobody had to tell me. Nobody ever told me, don't do it, or you cannot do it. I just did it. There was an inner love for education and inner love for sport. I think once you, you have the inner love for something, like I had no love for embroidery and snitting. Nobody could hold me back. But I loved making it in both. Again, without knowing, this is going to lead me to my uh, uh, services in this format. So I think you need to search the love within, and it emerges. So just love it. Ma'am, your dedication and drive are extremely inspiring. What did you say? Ma'am, your dedication and drive are extremely inspiring. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. I, I hope you take this inspiration further. But I'm going, giving you the little tips and techniques. Even traveling, when I was traveling as a tennis player, now that's another answer. When I was traveling as a 14-year-old playing national junior championships around the country, my box of uh, bag books was bigger than my clothes. I should travel with my books. So when we would be sitting and uh, while others were uh, chatting away, I would say now I would find another corner and I would study because I had an exam to take. So I would skip the class. I couldn't help it. My teachers would help me when I would come back and then I could sit for the exam because I'd come studied. And that was something which went up right to the masters when I topped the university as well because the way I used to value my time and respect my books. So traveling with books was another secret I has a, had as a tennis player. These are my few gifts to you. This is called the making of the top court. In fact, you are asking me exactly the questions which have been answered in this book called The Making of the Top Cop. And in this, it's a storybook, it's illustrated storybook like these, you know, where you can read these stories like pictures, right? And here, the making of the Top Cop obviously begins from school, right? So it begins with the school in the same way which has images. <laughs> yes. See, if you see, these are storybooks which have images here. I have a few of these so that you can see some of these images. And I'm going to lead all this for your library. I had request, told your principal that I would be. <laughs> So how many of you, when you grow up, would do a book like this on your own, of your own, about yourself, making of whatever your name is? How many of you will write your own book the way I did? You will do making of? Yes, making of? All hands need to go up. <laughs> All need, then I would say the achievement of the school. All hands need to come up, the making of? Speak your name, making of? Speak your name. Making of? Yeah, that's it. Now, I became a top cop. You may become a top cop. Who never knows? Those of you may join the security or armed forces or armed forces or the corporate world or the world of science, the world of literature, the world of art. Top cop, top cop or a top executive. Making of the... Because you all are going through this brilliant experience. So one day, remember, I'm going to leave these books for you as a, as in, as an inspiration, so that you have a look at this and you can copy copycat. <laughs> you can copy paste and design your. But this another secret is which is very good. Now, do you have all digital records of yours? I didn't have the digital photographs, but fortunately I preserved them, preserved them very carefully. The black and white. I preserved the newspaper clippings. That's why this book has even my news clipping of my 16-year-old national championship when it says Kiran Bedi, Kiran Peshavria wins the National Junior Championship. I have a newspaper clipping of 1966, and I had preserved it. Daddy had preserved it. So these were very good habits I had, which, which made me place these documents on record. So preserve your documents carefully. If you're going to make, and there's no if, you will. You will all make making of you. That should be your ambition and that goal. Once you make that, you will do your school proud. Oh, good morning, ma'am. I'm Bhavya from IBDP Year 1F, 
and I am, you are everything I want to be. I love history, I love literature, oh, I'm very loyal to India. But it's not just me. Women all around, women, you're an inspiration to women all around who want to enter not just male-dominated career paths, but in general, to young people who want to work in the civil service. So my question to you is, were there any such inspirations to you when you were growing up? Inspiration during my time were freedom fighters. Because I was quite close to the freedom movement. And they were all alive, they were all around, who sacrificed all their lives when, to make India free. It was, I'm still getting goose pimples, goosebumps, because I was so close to the freedom movement at that time, the national anthem, the bhakti ke sangeet, right? And their lives, and they were all coming on, there was no television, they were on the radio. We didn't have a black and white television even at that time. Telev that television came a little later. Even the black and white came later. What were we listening to? All India Radio. Their speeches on All India Radio. So that actually was inspiring me completely. It was energizing me and making my blood boil. I have also to do something like this. So it touched every bit of my life. So I think that was being close to the freedom movement. I was, and number two, I think the manner, in the, the kind of books we were reading. At that time, there were books of very great men and women. Swami Vivekananda influenced me a lot. And my school was also very, very collective. My school was Catholic. But the Catholic school made sure we read everything. It made us go to the church. It allowed us to go to the temple. It made us do everything. But it set value systems in us. So I owe a lot of my grounded value systems to the upbringing in the school at home. So I think that's what happens. What you read, you are what you read. You are what you see. You are, you are what you experience. So if your early children experiences, you give to yourself. Remember one thing, I had a choice. I had a choice to drop something out and pick something else, but I didn't. I was making those right choices. So I think at this age, making right choices, what you see, what you hear, what you hear, what you listen, I think it makes what you, this is what is actually, because all your subjects are already becoming part of your software in the mind. You may be creating softwares in your mind, uh, uh, outside coding, but actually you are all, even what I'm telling you now is entering your software. And do you know what the software word is? Selfware. So you are into software becoming a selfware. So this is all coding which is happening when, when elders come and speak to you of their successes, of their achievements, all their good practices. It really works. It's becoming software, but it's becoming selfware. So if you grow up to become software with selfware oriented, you'll see the change. So I think this is what's happening in the childhood, the self-ware of giving to my country. And I think I was rising above the country even. I was truly becoming global. I was truly becoming global. Do you know? I'll give you one evidence of that. When I sat for the Indian police service examination and I wrote religion, there was a form called in the U Union Public Service Commission, a column called religion. What's your religion? And at that time, I was 20 years old, and I wrote humanity. I wrote humanity. I was a practicing Hindu, but, and I was also visiting the Gurdwaras with my grandmother. I was also going to the church because of my school, but I was humanity. So actually, all these streams went in to make me a better human being. So I would think that this is what all happens. The NCC contributed, the sports contributed, and my own choices contributed, is of the self-ware. So this is how the self-ware remains. You have fed the software, but what are you left with? Self-ware. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Shlok Pant from IGCSC 9, and my question to you today is that uh, you played tennis competitively from the age of 13 till the age of 30. 
did you gain any skills from your experiences of tennis that aided you in your multiple careers and transitioning between them child if you want to be a good outstanding human being books and sports have to go together yes ma'am yes ma'am have to go together because what the sports teaches you book complements it they complement each other but you leave one out one out you've got to make an e another effort to get what you missed out so if you read well study well value your academics and also go and play that means you are investing your time correctly because otherwise you have time to play and if you don't play what else will you do you probably take take to the screen more more and more of screen more and more of television more and more of maybe the soft uh, the uh, youtubes youtubes are also greatly educative youtubes are very educative and they're academic in their order they also train you what i'm saying is but it's not outdoor it's screen time so if you invest yourself outdoor the best part is it links you with nature in any one of us as a child as growing times if they are related with nature lots of qualities of humanity enter you books make you read but uh, um, sports makes you live live them so if you do this sports every day and it's every any game and number 2 then you go back up if you are loving a game and you become competitive so sports gives you friends very healthy friends they all healthy friends because you have to be good in health to play a you got healthy friends you got better friends right and then you talking sports you talk not you have no time to do anything else and then you're practicing for sports you're going the extra mile for sports you are also being competitive for sports you also sometimes working harder to win but after the winning what do you do you shake hands you become friends again so you don't say i i'll teach you a lesson you you beat me in this championship i'll take you on the road side and i'll see what you do you don't do that you shake hands and you have you seen wimbledon finals when they wimbledon finals what do they do some of them even hug each other they like it that they got a great match so if you play sports then remember you are ready for the world and if you play competitive excellent and you also made friends even if you're not being competitive doesn't matter the kind of friends you make on the sports classroom and sports your world is healthier wider so i would think that some of my best friends even till now are my tennis friends more than school friends tennis friends because school friends we all remember the pranks but on tennis we remember the hard work the competition the sweat and the blood and the agony and the pain and the joy of winning and losing these are all different emotions which don't come sometimes only from the classroom so classroom complements sports and sports complements but if you do both that is why today i am able to stand before you or all in three in one so many in one because of sports and why what happened what happened to my other friends who didn't play sports they're nowhere and they tell me today oh kiran you were very smart i said why was i smart after our tennis after us after our playing up competitive tennis you went back to bed to study and while traveling you were and you were all the time playing and studying while we were only playing and only studying so they come back to me say you were very smart you made it two in one and that's why you go on and on and on we they we are nowhere near because they lost out it's not that only one well sports is money sports too and if you excel in that sport like in basketball or in tennis or in athletics or in gymnastics well then you've done it that's fine if you're going to go this far dedicate yourself fully then make it to the world championships make it to the olympics make it to the commonwealth games why not but even there you can continue to study because you can open a book and the teachers can help you a teacher can travel with you so it can be both somehow if you determine to do it it will happen but without sports you're not you're not having that extra in you which life wants because life is challenging you see the best thing sports gives you is resilience is resilience 
it's it's actually courage that's what it teaches you so i would say go play sports it gives you stamina it gives you courage it gives you decision making it takes you risk taking right gives you best of friends and it gives you a lot of decision making because sports is all spot on the spot decision making you cannot read about, about it only you may read but you have to live it this is what happens so what i am a big promoter of sports and i school to school i've been saying have you played have you gone play it's also team building because you kind of teams you make so do not all of you play all of you play yes ma'am no everybody did say yes all of you play yes ma'am no 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 you copying me <laughs> do you play yes ma'am okay you, we will play we shall play and in this game there is no boys girls in boy, uh, girls games games are games play team games play together and the kind of togetherness when you play will have its own uh, charm own thrill okay oh. next one thank you ma'am there are many differences between the uh, school system during your childhood and the current one do you think that there are any valuable aspects that have been lost during recent times conversely are there any aspects of our current system that you wish you had during your childhood i think the biggest add on to your schooling today is technology yes ma'am which didn't exist then mm. technology comes from computers to now artificial intelligence right coding softwares this what didn't exist then now you open your phone and you can read a book then i had to go to the library and get a book now i can open my uh, ipad and read many books now, i had to be uh, i was allowed only two books at a time from a library so i had to go back and say read deposit give it two more books give deposit two more books so the exceptions had to be made so then you have everything on your fingertips now you have the library with you library with you you have the teachers with you you have the lesson plans with you you have the technology with you we never had the technology we didn't have the computers and we had all hard copy libraries at part we did not have the television then but we had the radio and what did i do at those times i used to listen to the radio news meticulously i used to be very fond of bbc news the radio bbc world i never ever missed one particular program which was the hindi bbc news it used to come from 6 am to 7 am hindi bbc capsule i loved it then of course the rest of the world news would follow that gave me the worldwide and you know that listening it was not seen it was listening but the uh, curiosity with which i used to listen to the world news bbc was the particular then the second other program which i used to listen to radio as as a school girl was voice of america these are two radio news which are very good now you have a plethora of radio who don't even know where to tune in so i think my, my schooling was a lot of hard copy books but very strong in value systems now that has a, good schools all have very strong value systems all of them that hasn't changed what has changed is adding on and knowledge skills which have of course become more and more modern and things are more accessible to you and then of course accessible the communication was very high very fast as it as was communication value system has not changed that is stronger it all varies from school to school how children are oriented towards value systems and how do they practice them and live them because value system can never be outdated your levels of integrity your levels of friendship your levels of compassion your loving kindness being being helpful to the others they are constants and they come from boot reading of the books they also come from playing and they are not technology driven only they've got nothing to do with technology it's a human technology here that's a self where i talk to you about which you have to inculcate when you're small that is where schools vary from the intensity with which they teach you your self where and what i see today is is global leadership sitting here and if you all got your self where right you'll be right at the top of the world everywhere you are you'll stand out everywhere 
you stand out everywhere based on what you getting in the school so if you get to get the value systems with technology and with ethics and with morality and character building you will be all outstanding global citizen anywhere in the world what made me stand out was exactly what was taught in the school when i was at the united nations i was every time asked where did you come from where was your school where did you learn your english where did you learn your pronunciation where did you learn to write all this was asked back then because these remained constant so i would think schools teach you but how you all take it to what extent you take it varies from child to child but you are in a common environment to made be made global citizens you are global citizens that's why your faith also is humanity like mine was humanity because the moment i say humanity i belong to the world i remain an indian and i remain a practicing hindu but i also belong to the world and i respect everything what is right in humanity and i try to do so i think these are things are still similar and being reinforced in all schools which who are determined to make their children strong okay any other thank you ma'am good morning ma'am i am aaron anthony maliakal of ibo1 from gi smart campus singapore it is an honor to be present here today and to be speaking to you my fellow panelists are harshita vatukuru over there mukesh balan to your right and neha pulakart over here we also have other gsg schools with panelists who will be asking you questions through the monitor we look forward to learning a lot from this interaction and with your permission ma'am we would like to begin this panel discussion sure, all right ma'am i'll be asking you the first question uh your dedicated participation in social initiatives has been prominent throughout your career as students following the ibdp curriculum creativity activity service cas in short is an integral part we must fulfill cas holds a special significance for us as it allows us the opportunity to contribute to society ma'am can you share a recent cause or project that has captured your passion and additionally how can we participate in similar philanthropic efforts to make a positive impact you can do that by beginning from now now is, is the age to do this i was very privileged to meet a very honorable member parliament mr nair vikram nair i met mr vikram nair your honorable member parliament in of the singapore parliament yesterday and i asked him this question i told him i'm coming to your school he was very pleased to know that a very young dynamic very bright member parliament and do you know what he told me i asked him as i'm going to the school do you have a message do you have a thought as to what is it that i can talk to these children because you are here i'm an outsider what do the children need he said tell them to start volunteering wherever they are what did i say what did i say children can you just get up and see wake up and see answer me question what did i say i didn't hear you no not you <laughs> you are awake i'm only shaking up the other group what did i say oh they're looking around here what did she say what did i say that's what he said he says suggest to them to start volunteering in any field they are comfortable in now be alert because i might ask you any time anything okay i do that i do test check to keep awake say that if i am investing time into you are you using it and so are you investing time into me we are both investing time into each other and are we not you giving me your time i'm giving you my time that's why your honorable vikram nair said so and he's a, a very well learned lawyer by background from kerala and he's with you serving for a long long time and he said go tell them to start learning to be a volunteer at this age that means you start searching yourself what is it that you can offer volunteer services that's for a school policy also school will have to decide your logistics about it but you can say i am very happy with old age home i am with work with youth i work with 
on certain environmental issues. It depends. So if you can choose your volunteering and then say and s start giving some time in a week, an hour a week, hour a week would be good. That kind of give you the books which didn't give you, sports which didn't give you, but working there, the people connect will give you. The kind of people connect experience is something which will shape your thinking. So that's what I would say, that if you can all choose to be volunteering, but if I ask you, okay, give me three choices which come straight to your mind, volunteering. Can I begin with you? What do you think if you were given an option to volunteer, what would you do? Stand up and speak. What would be your uppermost? Louder. Loud. Helping? I, helping in? Orphanage. Orphanage. Good. So helping in an orphanage. Excellent. See? That's dearest to you. Next one. What do you think if you get an opportunity? Take the mask off and then speak. Yeah. Hospital. Hospitals. That means healthcare. Okay. Um, an old age home. Old age home. Stand up and speak. I volunteer in a school. A volunteer in school in what? Just the badge? Probably for sports. Sports, but it's sports in what? Pick up the balls? No, like coaching, like for sports. I can coach the kids. Are you good in coach? Good, good in a sport to coach? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Which sport? I play basketball. Oh, good. So you can help others learn basketball? No. Yeah. We are taking you out of the school. We are taking you out of the school. There's not comfort zone in the school. If you were to go outside in the society, then? Then? Probably like volunteering, cleaning like the ocean or something. So doing cleaning for the ocean? Yeah. Good, that's environment, right? Perfect, next yeah. door, next door. Your friend next door. Your friend next door, yeah. Yours? Uh, river cleaner. Louder? What do you think, if so, you were to ask, go volunteer outside, what would you do? Uh, what would you do? Maybe a translator. Louder. Translator. Translation? Yeah. Very good. Translation to whom? For whom? Students? Yeah. Learn a language? Yeah. Translation, but outside. That means teaching outside. Not at home, not here, not in school. Outside. Maybe yes. in a museum or... Or in a museum. That means actually working like an interpreter. Super. That's a great idea. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Next one. <laughs> one more and then I'm done. Uh, I think also volunteer off school. Sorry? Uh, volunteer off school. Off school? Yeah. What did you say? Uh, outside. Outside? Outside school. For an outside school? Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Chinese. Okay. Oh, so that's another way to do volunteering is teach other the language. Yeah, that's a great idea. Son, that's a great idea. Learning languages, teaching your own language and the other's language would be a good idea. Even in school. Here, even in school would be a good idea. Okay? But you can think about something. All right? I'm just giving you time food to th think. Okay, have you thought of something? Otherwise, I can go back to the next question now. Netflix. All right, doesn't matter. I think I'm only given a provocation to think. But if uh, language is an issue, as is, I understand that, like for me, language would be an issue. I would not understand another language other than one I know. That's understandable, fully respecting that. But what I'm giving you as an idea is what your member parliament said himself and volunteers says, suggest to them start into volunteering sometime in a week or two and then it will be i think what that would do wonders for you 
because that experience will stand you build leadership actually that people connect brings in early leadership and early leadership then builds the leadership because you're all going to be leadership in your own professions in your own lives so it's early leadership will give you better leadership thank you ma'am for your insightful response uh, ma'am our next question to you will be from yumi hayashi from the gis tokyo campus the question will be displayed in the monitor in front of you Hello ma'am, I am Yumi Hashi from JS Tokyo. And my question to you is, as a leader, how do you encourage innovation and creativity within your team? And how can we as students apply these principles in our academic and extracurricular pursuits? I can tell you how as a leader I did. How did I encourage innovation creativity? Is to pose the issue to this class and my team and ask everybody to contribute. So supposing I'm with a group of 10 people, and in those 10 people, I would say, this is the challenge of today, friends, which has emerged maybe for the newspapers, or it's come as a grievance redressal system, or as a policy which has come from the government, I don't know. But as a, this is the way I did as a Lieutenant Governor of Pondicherry, when I, this was my last assignment. What did I do? 9 a.m. every morning, I used to have my team meeting. In the team meeting, we used to go through the newspapers of yesterday, and find out the issue of the day and put it to the team. And then take the mic around and saying, you, you, you. And if somebody says, I have nothing, no, no, you have to contribute. So once you make people think and get involved, so involving everybody as a stakeholder, number one. Number two, make them equally important. Two, three, make them understand they are important thinkers themselves. I can't think for them, and I cannot think like them. Therefore, they have the uniqueness. It's number three is respecting their thinking. It's not, oh, you said it, no, do not required. No, appreciate everything. So that is how you encourage creativity, is when you are in a team, you speak last. As a leader, you don't say, I have, I have a problem, and this is my solution, what do you think? Everybody will say, very good, sir. Very good, madam, very good. No, 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 it's not like, like that. I speak last. I have, as a leader, only questions to ask. I pose an issue, and I ask each body. Each person say, what do you think? And believe me, they're brilliant. Innovation happens when you part make people participate and make them equal stakeholders, fully respected, fully recognized. And once you recognize them, and then apply it, and then say, that, I think, is a great idea. What do you think? Then they all started to accept that this is a great idea. And creativity happens, problems get solved. Problems are not only with the leaders, remember. Problems are collectively, collectively somewhere hidden. Uh, pro problems exist, so are solutions hidden. So if you make everybody participate, you get the best. And then also sometimes you mix and match. Something comes from here and something comes from there. You find a middle ground for a good decision. So creativity happens and innovation happens when you make everybody participate in the problem solving and recognize and respect everybody's contribution. And the leader speaks last. And the leader then recognizes that you are right, I accept that. And then the person feels so good. Oh, so and so, my officer likes my idea. So he's next day again to contribute. So you have actually switched on the brains. They were switched on, off. In the meetings, you switch off sometimes. No, no, no. Switch, keep them switched on. Pose the problem to them. Challenge them. Think, contribute. See that? That's how it is. Thank you, ma'am. Institute of Higher Knowledge has shaped your ability to take on a dynamic career and in today's modern age, how important do you think uh, higher education is for future success? Oh, well, it takes you higher and higher. That's why it's called higher education, because it, it keeps uplifting you. And higher education also doesn't stop. Keep learning higher and higher. It means keep read every day. Listen every day. Stay, your, up, stay up to date every day. I read every day certain magazines on leadership every day, on management and leadership every day. I don't miss any article on artificial intelligence these days because I know that's a challenge for the future. So articles on artificial intelligence and articles on leadership, whether it's Harvard Business Review, 
whether it's the INC, the Incorporated, whether it's a Forbes, whether it's the MIT, whether it's Stanford, I listen. And do you know where I'm getting the articles from? Thank God, social media. I, I subscribe to all these magazines and Reader's Digest. These are very interesting magazines. Uh, in Indian magazine is positive thinking. Now, all of these are, once you subscribe and look for articles, you get them every day. And then what you do, you read them, take a printout, put them in your library. And then when you are doing speaking engagements or you're doing, go back to your library. You have already marked them. You can go back to your markings and you're able to then contribute. So higher learning makes you hungry for higher learning higher reading, higher knowledge acquisition. So remain hungry. Once you remain hungry for knowledge and reading, you will continue to pursue your higher. Because education is always evolving. New strategies, are I new ideas. What are you reading for? Ideas. What does higher learning give you? Ideas. And the world belongs to good ideas. The world belongs to better ideas. And whoever has an idea, what is Apple? Wasn't Apple an idea? Wasn't Apple an idea? Wasn't computer an idea? They all, Microsoft an idea? They all started from an idea, maybe from a car garage. It was an idea which had, its, had the world. You see this today? All of these things have come up with ideas. So I look for the next idea in that article because I, whatever I've read before are already ideas settled here. But when you read a new idea, you write, oh, this is revision. No, you find a new idea. So you are a person of ideas then, and then you are able to then situationally respond. So you remain up to date. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, our fellow student, Kushi Kaushal Shah from Witty International School, Mumbai campus, has a question for you, which will be displayed on the screen in front of you. Good day, ma'am. My name is Kushi Shah from grade nine, Cambridge, studying at Witty International School, Chikwadi, Borabli. So, as we all know that the India Vision Foundation is a brilliant initiative of yours that is similar to a program we have here at Witty International School. It is the World Vision Program where students use digital means to educate the underprivileged children in rural areas of India. So ma'am, my question for you is, what do you think is the significance of young people participating in social work? Yes, as I said, the earlier you begin, younger you begin social work, the better. You make better leaders. I did it at the age of 13 when we had an Indo-Pakistan war in Amritsar. You see, I lived, lived in the border town of Amritsar, India, and that is the Indo-Pakistan border. Amritsar is right on the border. Anyone of you been to Amritsar? The Golden Temple? Yes, I belong to the city of the Golden Temple. And I was living in uh, Amritsar school, my home was Amritsar, and that's where, when we had 1965 Indo-Pakistan war, and for the first time, saber jets came in, where you could zoom, they, fly, they could fly over you, and there would be then a siren thing, see? The way that we fight our wars have changed, like the schools, many situations have changed. So we used to have the cyber jets flying right over our heads, right over our heads, and I was in school at that time, and then the rule was that whenever there's a cyber jet picking up from the other side of the border, there will be a siren. And the siren would mean you'd run into trenches. So if you're on the road, so we would get into the trenches and then watch the cyber ride, ride the plane fly over. And you never know where it's dropping the bomb. But we would get into trenches. I learned to get into these trenches. Uh, the, um, so that's where I learned the, uh, what did I do? From the trenches, I would pick up my psych and go serve in a hospital. I did a Red Cross as a school girl. What did I do? Clean the floor. I cleaned the floor. And then I would sit and sit and do a registration for them because many people were coming for blood donation. See, I remember it now, even what I did as a 13-year-old girl. If I had not done that, would I be able to narrate it to you? But Parents would say, go and serve. They would not say, no, no, very protected. Something will happen. They'll say, if the saber jet siren comes, Kiran, get into the trench. And we got into the trench. And look, doing that, doing that taught me so much of confidence, taught me so much of energy, so much of resilience, so much of courage, so much of risk-taking. Would I get it if I wouldn't do this? 
and number two, giving, serving, serving with their own hands, cleaning the floor, and then uh, um, uh, registering for the old and the who is coming for blood donations. And, and then I grew up to be a blood donor myself because I started to value blood donation. You understand? These are things which you come at the early age. The earlier, the better. Volunteer or to ask for guidance. And once you volunteer and guide, you will be different personalities. You all are going to face lots of interviews. Remember that. When you go in for higher studies further, scholarships, you will be asked what extracurricular activities did you do in school. And those of you who have done better, genuinely, genuinely, honestly, with heart and soul, you're going to get the scholarship. Mark my words. Many students from across the country in the world are coming to my foundations for internships. For what? To learn what I do, work with me what I do, shadow me for what I do, and then in the end, take a certificate of having done what they did. And that certificate, when I give them, gets them probably an edge over others on scholarships in, in many, many, particularly American universities. So therefore, extracurricular activities of sports, music, art, culture, um, and then volunteering for the aging or the sanitation or, or environment or your own ideas will stand you in good stead, will give you the scholarship. So if anyone of you is aspiring for scholarships overseas or anywhere, this will help you in your extracurricular activities. But remember, they will grill you. Moment you say, I did it, they'll grill you. How much did you do? Where did you do? Where did, how did you do? They'll ask you for credibility. Not that you got a certificate just like that. It will not help you. On the contrary, you lose your scholarship if you lie. Or if you fake it. So friends, it will help you. Therefore, the significance of young people participating in social work is early leadership. Because you are moving towards leadership lifestyles. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure that Whitney International thanks you for your response. You attain the honorable position of Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry. And it would be an understatement to say that the road, how have you dealt with failure in your life? And what advice do you have for all of these students gathered here today on dealing with failure? OK, I have another book for you then. The answer to this question is another book. And this is this. I told your principal I would be bringing this for your library. This is your book. Here we are, called Fearless Governance. It's all about leadership qualities, leadership good practices, which I adopted as a lieutenant governor of Puducherry. And it has wonderful pictures as well. And it has all the good practices. This, if you get to read it sometime. And by the way, it's downloadable from my website, free. Free downloadable from my website called kiranbedi.com. So you can download it as many times. Oh, no, no, sorry, one book at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so you can download it, read it for yourself. It's soft copies available. Please read it. This will give you very many ideas on leadership as you grow. But it will also start applying. So this is the answer to the book. These are going to be gifted to your man principal for your library when you get time to read it. But it's available on the online uh, website. You can run through the pages. Your question is, what was it? First part was? Um, how have you dealt with failure in your life? How done? Failure? Yes, ma'am. Failure? What is failure? <laughs> what is failure? <laughs> failure. I would fail if I, let's say, let's say, example, when you fail in a tennis match, you don't fail, you lose. You don't fail. Do you know when you fail? When you're afraid to play. That's a failure. So why would I be afraid to play? Because that person is very good. That's a failure. But I was never afraid. I, was, don't, I didn't mind losing to a better player. So that's failure. Failure is when you don't even try. You're afraid. When you take an examination and you don't succeed in the number of marks you get, it's not a failure. Try again. But the failure is that you didn't even take the exam. And you were afraid to take the exam. That's failure. So remember, failure is when you fail to take the right steps when you want to do something and you're afraid, you're a coward, or you, you, you're lazy, you're lazy. But uh, it's not failure is when you don't get the kind of result you want. I lost many tennis matches, I won many matches, but I went back to play better. 
work harder, that's failure. That's victory, and failure is when you are afraid. Thank you, ma'am, for that valuable advice. Ma'am, our next question will be from Alexander Totman of One World International School, Nanyang, Singapore campus. Hello, Ms. Betty. Thank you for giving me this chance to interact with you. My name is Alec, and I study at OS Nanyang, Singapore. My question is, in today's interconnected world, how can students foster a sense of global citizenship and promote cultural understanding within diverse GSF schools? What kind of cross-cultural initiatives or experiences do you recommend for young people to broaden their perspectives? You're already in a universe which is global. Understanding each other's languages and cultures and music, I think it's just this is the beginning of this global citizenship. Understand where you are. Now, I want your full attention right now. This is the reason I'm here today. I found the time for you. I could have spent this hour and a half something doing something else. But I chose to be with you today, or it was chosen also. It was pre-decided that I'll come to this global international school for the reason that I knew I was meeting global students and global leaders. So begin here. If there is, you have a Chinese or a Malaysian or an Indian or uh, African, anywhere, whoever, understand their culture now. Know their languages now. So first of all, make your friends within your classroom. Begin there. After that, de develop your interest. But also remember that you are not going to stay back in Singapore and in India or in China or anywhere working. Today, work is global. The world is global and it truly international. You are now in an international global village, as it's always said. It was not like that during my time. Today, it is true. That means languages you know would stand you in good stead. Right? Travels you do would stand you in good stead. What you do during travels would stand you in good stead. Understand the reading through the internet about particular countries will stand you in good stead. Innovations happening, technology innovations happening around the countries will stand you in good stead. So as knowledgeable as you are about the people, and most of all, is respect for each other's culture. Respecting each other's culture, just as you want your culture to be respected. Respect the others, habits, culture, rather than looking down upon, appreciate it. So it is being appreciative about our diversity. Men, women, or geography. That is what you have to be learning. This is what this global school is all about. So learn languages now, if you want to learn. But friends not, so that they, you become best friends. Learn about each other's culture, read. Read. Today, your Google and Wikipedias give you all the information you need. Your chat GPT, you can prompt and you'll, she'll give it, or the he will give you the answers. We don't even know it's a he or a she. But we'll give you. So the more global you are in your mind, listen to the international news and have your own opinions, but value each other's culture. Value values, which is peace, dignity, respect, human labor. I think once you do this, you will become truly a, a leading leaders of the world. And I see you doing this happening, and I do not know how long my life would be to meet you again, but you will all, I predict that you will be successful global leaders anywhere you are. Why? Because your grounding is global. So be, be, be prepared for it. Prepare yourself with a universal opinion. Some of you may join political life, you never know. Some of you may join administration, never know. But administer in such a way which is just, which is fair, which is honest, which is not uh, uh, dis divisive. You are not to divide the world. You are here to unite the world. That's why you are a school together. I want to tell you I read somewhere which is very useful for you. Do you know the signs of that you are uh, the chosen one? Do you know God gives you signs of the chosen ones? God gives you the sign whether you're the chosen one. 
because the world is poor and rich have and have not you are the have world do you know the diff- how god cho- uh, gives tells you what the, whether you are the chosen one what is the sign of being a chosen one anybody you ask yourself am i the chosen one what is my sign of being a chosen one by the almighty what is the sign of being a chosen one any one sign raise your hand and tell me you are the chosen one huh not the teachers tell <laughs> i want you to think because i want this thought to remain with you it will st- help you the chosen one yak yeah, stand up and speak oh, shout what makes you think you are the chosen one in the mother's womb when you are born then you are the you are the one sperm that reached the egg say speak louder in the mother's womb you were like you had the stamina to reach the uh, egg cell perfect so you were born a healthy child from your mother's womb that's a chosen one healthy child born is a chosen one there are many children who die in birth they die in child birth but that you god chose you to live through your mother's womb isn't it all right any other signs of chosen one any other sign of chosen one yeah signs of chosen one the fact that you are asking the question aha so the chosen one because the fact that you are also in the school good all right any other any other question so one two more and then i'll tell you where it is lies very easily with is it not the day is it not where you have all the features in you you have the good brain you have the good you have charisma you have the strong will power you even have the best of the best you have good looks in yourself you even have everything around you that is why you are the chosen one see he said it all this boy what's your name my name is agnesh abhinath this boy has said it all when you all these things you are the chosen ones number 1 who sent you this is did you choose your school yourself or somebody sent you who sent you here who sent you all to the school your friends your neighbors who sent you here your neighbors your friends any any leaders who sent you here say yeah that means that's where you are chosen and thereafter what you do with your life is what you said is you are the chosen because the parents chose you you were born to the parents who are have a vision for you who have a dream for you and they chose the school for you you the chosen ones there are many other children who are back home in my my places where they don't this yearning for a better school or a higher school so remember i want you to understand you are the chosen ones but it doesn't stop at this your first of all the fact that you're born to parents as that girl said you're born a healthy from the mother's womb the fact that you are born to such parents is a chosen one millions of children are born every day but children who get parents who have a vision who have a dream and a passion for you you are the chosen one that means you are choosing one means what why do i say chosen one chosen one means moment you recognize that you are a chosen one you have a responsibility to fulfill carry on you want to say something oh yes ma'am so i was raising my hand to answer your question about um, what are the signs that indicate you are the chosen one and i would like to share this model that i've lived up to my whole life it's called um what what i experience constitutes who i am so um based on my personal experience i feel like 
Um, in Chinese, we have an old saying, which is before the God gives you, uh, made you the chosen one, you have to experience different kinds of challenges like hunger, poverty, uh, exhaust, different kinds of mental struggles, uh, you know, failures, and so on, so on. So I feel like it really applies to me because um, as a Chinese scholar studying alone in Singapore, and um, I've gone through a lot of things last year, and these experiences constitute who I am now. Uh, I become more self-aware, as you've mentioned before, and I'm also trying to, um, you know, to expand this influence, um, to share the stories and experience of my own through um, a website I've created with my friends. It's called We See Overseas. It's like a online blogging community where um, international students, they can, um, we write blogs, we do online seminars, we invite guest speakers from different colleges. So we invite um, like counselors, psychology counselor, Korea counselor, or um, undergraduate or graduate students. So how did you get to know you with the chosen one? Yeah, so basically because I've gone through a lot of things and then um, they did make me like collapse and crash and frustrate and doubt myself before. Mm. But now coming through all of them, I realized that these are the signs uh, that, God, that God gave me. And who sent you here? Myself, I would say. My parents and myself. There you are. I'm coming back to you. You were going through a brilliant experience, as you said, which made you realize so a few things. That experience made you grow and evolve, br 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 bring in a lot of self aware But your parents sent you here. Who told your parents who sent you here? So there's a chosen one. That's a thought which came to their mind to send you here, to make your life. So you are the chosen one. Why aren't many other friends maybe anywhere living, not, they've not found a place. I want to take home this good message that you are, each one of you is a chosen one of humanity, not only of this place, humanity. And that you have a responsibility now to keep evolving and growing and also think big. Just as you are made, being made to think big, you grow up to make others think big and then co collaborate, not compete. Only not com always collaborate. Be kind to them, be compassionate to them, be empathetic to them, and most important, give to them what you can. I, I definitely agree with your point, man. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, child. Thank so, you. Thank you very much. So remember, you are the chosen ones. I was telling you my story. When did I come to know? I come to know it when I was just about eight to nine years old. And you know what it was? When I was small, when I was being asked by my teacher, what will you be when you grow up? I didn't know I would be a police officer at that time. I said, I... I'll be now, I'll be a strong woman. Everybody, he, he laughed, everybody. I said, I'll be a strong woman. And the others, is, others looked around and said, oh no, but I'm looking to get married very fast. And with a lot of dowry and I'll look pretty and I'll go to another home. That's fine, perfectly fine. That's okay, good to be that equally, nothing wrong with it. But I was chosen, why? And I asked him, why are you saying this? He said, because our parents are telling us that you have to go to another's home and be pretty and learn embroidery. <laughs> learn to stitch and tailor because you will have to go and embroider. Those were the days when young girls would learn to stitch and tailor. Then stitching was a thing for any woman to go home to another's place and do stitching and tailoring. I was a chosen one. I realized, why are my parents not telling me? They're all the time saying, be a champion. Be a best student. Why are these girls' parents telling them about that they have to be strong? And see what happened? Our lives patterns changed. They went and got into secure homes. Happy homes, no problem. Happy homes, settled homes. I went into mark a career for myself and make a life of my own and be a strong woman. And I felt I was a chosen one. So friends, remember that you are the chosen ones when you got a school like this, when you got parents like this who sent you here, and you are the chosen one now, moment you start feeling a sense of higher responsibility, that I now belong to the world to, do, to serve humanity and make humanity a better place to live in, more peaceful, 
and more kinder and then more equitable. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. It's a privilege to hear your views on this. Thank you. Ma'am, ma this is going to be our last question for you. How do you handle pressure and maintain composure during high stakes situations? And what strategies can we as IB students adopt to stay resilient during the rigors of the curricula? Thank you for a perfect last question. This is a perfect, couldn't have, you couldn't have asked a better last question. But for this, you have to do a little exercise with me, a little practicum with me. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. This is something also which will stay with you. Because I'm trying to say everything which will stay with you, it can come back to you. And as you grow up, because you all have to grow up and be world citizens. The practice is, shut your eyes. Let's be quiet for a while. She asked me this question, how do I handle pressures? How do I handle stress? And we'll all be under pressure and stress all our lives. It will come from all directions. But how will you handle them? I'm going to give you a two-minute exercise, and that will stay with you. And it'll, you can use this technique every time you are under stress or pressure. So just shut your eyes and go into deep breathing. And observe your breath come in and go. Just deep breathing. Please shut your eyes, it will help you. these eyes closed, just thank your parents, thank your families for sending you and giving you these opportunities of best education. Just while eyes are closed, see your parents, see your teachers, see your school, visualize the school. Visualize your parents and say thank you to them. If you get into this habit 
of being quiet once in a day at any time of the day at night before you sleep or you get up in the morning just say thank you god thank you lord thank you me divinity thank you my parents for giving me these opportunities to educate myself to the best of the ability give me the strength to imbibe all that is being taught to the maximum so that when i grow up i grow up as a grateful citizen grateful citizen and a happy citizen healthy citizen happy and healthy you will be wealthy you will be wealthy but for that you need to be healthy and happy and this quietitude of gratitude will daily give you the energy to do more achieve more but will also remain healthy this is the mantra for you today of gratitude and quietitude gratitude and quietitude and with your eyes shut visualize your parents visualize your school and teachers and say thank you say thank you with me say thank you thank you say thank you from your bottom of your heart say thank you. thank you thank you lord for giving me this good health and these opportunities thank you lord thank you say thank you again that's it from your from the bottom of your heart visualize them visualize your parents see them see your school see your teachers and thank them every day any one of you who thanks everybody for whatever you have and thank the almighty for giving you good health to be here and you're not anywhere else thank you for the health automatically as you grow wealth will come but wealth will not bring health it's health which will bring wealth remember that so every day the mantra is few minutes to yourself to handle your stress or anxiety by saying thank you say thank you again and let me also say thank you let me also say thank you thank you for giving me this opportunity i too got chosen one i became the chosen one to be with you today thank you friends god bless you may each one of you make it so big in your life that when i grow up i hear oh the same school boy and girl who did it god bless you thank you thank you so much ma'am for your wonderful insights miss dr bedi may i now request you to sign the guest book thank you so much ma'am as a token of appreciation of her time and contribution may i now request our chairman mr atul temurnikar to kindly felicitate our guest we also have a special gift from ayodhya celebrating the pran pratishtha ceremony which was held recently